Hello and welcome to the next next hour. As always, if you have a question, please join the meeting. The link is in the description. Uh, here we have Jan who asked a question and it's already on GitHub as well. So we'll take that. Uh, otherwise, if you have a question beforehand you want to write down, uh, you can do so in the next hour GitHub repository as an issue. And we'll get to those when uh, when we don't have a question in the meeting. So yeah, uh, today we'll take a look at uh, secret management. And so uh, how do you generally manage secrets? Uh, why is it hard to do on, on Nixos on, or Nix in general? Uh, why do uh, why do Nixos and deploy for uh, built an option for managing secrets and in deployments. Uh, yeah, sometimes it's not great to have secrets specified at build time and work around them, uh, for that. So yeah, I, I, let's jump into this by looking at, uh, let's try to get to systemd.load credential and look at some other options that might, that you might run into. So I think let's start with just a Nexus module. Let's try to come up with something that some service. So my service, and let's start off with a Nexus module. So we might have an option uh, declaration. We let's say we have an, an enable option. My service, let's nest this under services. Uh, let's do it like this, my service. And then we have an enable option, let that make uh, enable option, I believe this works. My service, and we need to get a lib in scope, so let's do this. All right, and then on the implementation side, we do a lib.make if uh, we can do config.services.myservice.enable. And generally, you would turn this into a CFG variable up here. CFG equals this. All right, let's replace this with just CFG. Now we want to have a systemd service here. So let's do systemd.services.myService is equal to, then let's say we have a script, and the script just does. Um, let's say um, for uh, or let's say while true do actually the syntax highlighting is a bit mistake. Okay, it's fine. Do echo um, sure done. All right, and actually yeah, let's try this out. I believe. How do we best try this out? Let's write, should we write a Nexus test? I guess we can try writing a Nexus test. So yes, um, okay, so this is our service module. So we now need a configuration.nex um, or let's do a, actually, so uh, this is from last time. Let's do a VM test.nex. And let's copy some other tests so we don't need to duplicate a lot of things. Nexus modules or Nexus tests. We're going to do some service. That might be one. OK, this is actually a fairly big one. I'm just going to delete all the things we don't need. Nodes. Uh, so we just want a single service in here. Let's just do this and machine equals and then we do imports we import our service module so my service .nix. we say services my service dot enable equals true and then we have a test script in the test script we do start all the machines and that machine dot wait for unit we wait for my service dot target uh, dot service I mean no semicolon needed in Python 
All right, and then this does succeed resolve host name. We want to check the logs. I believe we can do this with journal D. Let's look at the tests, journal or journal control. Yeah, so there's some tests in here that do a crap through journal control. And I believe that, that should work. So let's copy this. VM test. And let's do machine.succeed journal control. Now we want to grab for this in my service, but then grab for foo, I suppose. All right, and then I believe that's it. We don't need anything else. So it's just this. Uh, this arcs can go as well. And this is my service. And instead of the make test Python, so this only works in the Nexus tests directory, we're going to do a packages import. Just I'm in next packages here, so I'll just do this. Actually, let's, let's do it somewhat a bit more properly. And then packages.nexos test like this. Now let's try to run this with next build vm test.nex. Undefined variable config. Oh, okay. Made a mistake in the service here. We need config up here because we use it uh, here. All right, let's try running it again. And seems to be doing something that's good. All right, starting with the machine. And we have a problem. Oh, I think I see the problem inactive and there are no pending jobs. The service actually isn't being started by anything. And this makes sense because we don't have anything that would start it in here. Usually you would solve this or have this in here, multi-user.target. So I believe after n requires, actually, let me check a random service in Nexus just to make sure. Uh, Multi-user.target. And let's, with rip grab, add some context of two lines. So yeah, we want wanted by, yes, just wanted by. Actually, it's not after, yeah. My service wanted by multi-user.target. Underneath the wanted by just translates to a service, or actually, it's, I believe it's no, a service config or unit config, but underneath it just becomes a wanted by in here, and this then gets translated to the service file. Uh, but yeah, let's do this and try to run the test again. All right, and it succeeded. My service dot start foo is in here. All right, and maybe just quick thing. Um, I wonder. So VM test. I would like to see the resulting machine configuration, though I'm not sure if that is actually exposed by the result of the Nexus test function. We could try looking at this through here, loading the VM test file into Nextrepl. Actually, that won't show us the variables that were added. So let's do it like this instead. Um, VM test equals import VM test. And the VM test dot. Oh, it's a lambda. Um, VM test dot. And we can see all the things. A lot of these are derivation attributes. A uh, system that's not the right system, it might not be exposed. I don't immediately, I don't immediately see anything passed through. Oh no, it's actually here. That looks like it. Yes. So config dot um, 
config.services.units. Uh, um, not quiet. Oh, it's systemd.unit units dot and then we can access the my service dot service and what does this contain this contains the text and the unit as well so this is interesting for debugging let's just copy this notes this string here we can try doing this vm test and then we build this attribute Oh, and now uh, we have a slight problem with quoting here because the these ones are quoted on the bash level. So we need to wrap it with an extra set of quotes. All right, so this works. And we get back just the service file that the service creates. Oh, and it's a directory, so um, we need to cut the file. So yeah, we can see in here the, uh, well, the XX start is here. Actually, the wanted by isn't in here because it's in the multi-user service. Uh, we could also take a look at this. So we could say, let's look at multi-user.target and cut the resulting thing. And it doesn't actually show as wanted in here. Okay. it's. I think it's a bit more dynamic than that. We can't immediately see it here. I think it might result in a directory, something like multi-user target once, but I'm not mm. sure how does one dig. Yeah, I'm not same here. I'm also not sure about that. Uh, but yeah, this is also useful if you just want to, like we can, via this option, we can get unit files without actually using Nixos. This is sometimes useful when you have a very useful Nixos module in here somewhere, and you're not super interested in actually having uh, in actually using Nixos with the service, but you just want to uh, use these options here. In that case, you can essentially do a, a, a Nixos configuration that you don't actually use in the end, just to extract this definition essentially. Uh, yes. But anyway, so the test builds now. Uh, but let's try to now actually add some secret in here. So the kind of easiest option, so let's say we need a password. And the password might be, well, that's very unsafe, of course, but the password would be echoed in here. Actually, to make this a bit more realistic, let's have an exec start in here. Uh, access stripped. I kind of want to strip that we can call and pass an argument to. So I guess let's do a my script dot shell. Let's do a user bin and bash. And then let's do while true do echo. Uh, one. Let's say this is the password. Password equals that one. Okay, done. Password. All right. And I guess uh, no, that's fine. So we can pass the script a password, and it will just output it. And here we're going to use xx start now. This has to be under the service config section. So xx start. Well, it doesn't really matter whether you use exec start or script. There is a slight difference uh, for now. Let's use exec start my script. And then let's pass the password here. So what should the password be? Well, initially it was foo. But to customize this, we could add a password option in here. Lib.make option. We're going to do a, so this is, don't do this, but just to show what might uh, what you might go for in the beginning. So we might say it's a string. And we set no default. If you don't set a default, the user has to provide it if you evaluate the option. And then we use cfg.password here. 
All right, let's see what happens if we try to evaluate this. So yeah, we get an error that the password is optionally used but not defined. So in our VM, let's do actually like this. My uh, our VM test .next. So in here we will set my services dot, dot password equals um, this is my password. All Does right, let's for something different. Oh yes, that's true. This is my password. Okay, save and build this. And this will work, uh, but there is a problem with this, and that's the reason we don't want to do this usually. So this will work. I'm not going to run this to completion. Actually, I don't really like the Vim, using the Vim split here because it doesn't integrate with my window manager. Uh, but yes, yeah, so and now the problem is that these that the password ended up in the next door. We can also oh um I need to close this in test. Yeah, and so we could probably like let's try a grab for this is my password through next door. Bit bit over over the top. I hope this doesn't take too long. Or I mean, alternatively, we could also check uh, this. We could say, let's go in here. Let's do a next build VM test dot next. Um, yes. We need next instantiate VM test dot next. Any second now. All right. Uh, so this is the derivation. We can get all the inputs to that derivation with next door dash q r. Uh, well, these are the uh, this is the transitive closure of all the things here. And here we could grab for my service dot service. All right, found the unit file here. And then next door dash r. Through this, we get the actual path to that. And actually, that's the same thing we did earlier, uh, just a bit more indirect. And then again, cat the service file. And then here we can see exit start. Oh, actually, this won't work. We oh oh yeah, this this <laughs> this is a problem. We we have two exit starts in here. And you made it a list. Yes, uh, I I wonder actually if this will be a problem because systemd has some some support for overriding and and appending things. So um, let's let's just run it. Yeah, so it will be in the next turn. That's not great. And so one option. So in this case, we are kind of. If we, yeah, that, that didn't work. Inactive and there are no pending jobs. Actually, we never checked out that the wanted by actually works. Hmm. In any case, let's, let's keep going. Just make it yes. a string and it should start working. Oh, this? Yeah, and without a list. Hmm. Oh, and uh, this one as well. Script password. All right, let's see if this works. Uh, but yeah, so in this case, hopefully, so, so in this case, we have the script which takes the password as an argument. That's a bit problematic because then it means that even if you do any, a lot of other things to prevent the argument from ending up in 
uh, in the in the next tour, the password would still end up in the executable arguments. Oh, the test didn't succeed. But yeah, you can. Uh, let's check this for briefly. Uh, you can in Nexus check. Well, in Linux, you can check the uh, processor or the process command line for all the processes. And I think this is this is read readable for all the users. Maybe I'm not entirely sure. But anyways, the password ends up in here, whatever you pass. And so that's still not great. Um, well, let's look at this a bit later. And so usually what you want to hope that scripts provide is a way to pass the password via a file. So instead of having password here, we can hope for password file. So instead of echoing that password directly, it should cat the file uh, and read the password from there. And Let this file way... to current line. Oh, yes, thanks. And this way we can adapt our service, my service to instead of a file here. So immediate change would be this password file uh, string. We changed this to a path and then on the service side as well. This won't really change much though. Uh, well, actually it will change a little bit. Instead here we'll, we'll have now a password file. And so this, well, one way to do this, and this wouldn't really improve on anything, is to use either builtins.toFile, my password. Dot, let's make it super obvious, uh, my password. And so toFile is a built-in that just creates a, a file in the next door. Uh, there's also packages.writeFile. It does the same thing, but it's not a built-in. Uh, difference is the built-in only supports uh, uh, strings that are known at evaluation time. So if you want to do packages.hello in here, that wouldn't work. Uh, but that does work with packages.write file. The disadvantage with this one is that it has to create a derivation and actually build the derivation for the file to exist. Whereas uh, built-ins.to file is much more cheap. Uh, but yeah, so this works. Well, it should work if the service actually succeeds. Let's try to debug this briefly. Uh, so we have reached failed state. So oh, um, scroll up a bit here. And let's see if we have any good logs here. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, I I think the problem might be that the script isn't executable. Let's, let's try doing that. Oh, and the uh, write file, it's not write file, it's write text, I believe. All right, write text. And the option password file doesn't exist. I might, oh, I didn't uh, change the name here, patch the file. All right, let's, let's see how this goes. And that still doesn't work. Unit reached state, using my service reached state failed. Um, I wish we had better locks here or my script. Oh, here it is. Fair enough, bash is not in the environment in the scope yet. So let's add packages up here. All right, close some stuff. Okay, that worked, very nice. Uh, so yeah, but, but yeah, this way we still end up with the password in the next door. 
both the right text and built in stuff to file, they create a file in Linux store. And this is where you can now use uh, one of these uh, secrets. Um, secrets. This is where we can now use one of these solutions here. All of these essentially depend on the file, on the secret being stored in a file. Uh, so load credential, uh, let's look at this one first. Um, this, well, let's let's look at the uh, systemd docs here. So I believe it's in systemd.exec, load credential. All right, uh, bah, 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 bah. so credentials are essentially files that can be passed to units. And the kind of thing they do is that the file can be stored as the root, root user or with only permissions for the root user. And if you pass it to a service with load credential, the user of the service explicitly is only given access to the file. Um, I'm not sure if the secret, the secret already in, here we have an ephem ephemeral VM, so we can't actually do that. Um, I guess we can do it down here. So let's simulate a succeed a command down here where we say let's generate a secret. So let's use make pass make pass word uh, foo. I believe there's a command line here as well. Yeah. Uh, this is my secret. Oh, and actually, no, this is make password. pvgen next shell dash p pass pvgen. Yeah, that should be pvgen. Now we just want one. Let's do. Um, Actually, oh, uh, password length and then number of. Let's do 120 length password. All right. So we do this in here, and now we need to actually also get access to this. We gen in. All right. Now let's write this to. So we can write this to the root user. The command here is most likely executed as root. And so if we do password. And so this, you might imagine using this for secret keys. You often, password file is root my secret key. This will actually still work here because the service still runs as root and root has access to everything. Uh, let's try it out. Let's grab for Thanks. something different now. Uh, Oh, like echo yes, that's password true. equals something and grip for password equals or something like that. Yeah, yeah, good point. My script. The secret no, is. No, you're, is. you're in the cat. Oh, yep. So let's do the secret is, and then we need to remove the new line and cat that. Uh -huh should work. All right. So let's grab for the, did I capitalize it? I don't think so. So grab for the secret is, build the VM test. And did I, I uh, didn't put a load secret credentials here yet. Oh yeah, actually I didn't. Oh yeah, oh, that's good. Okay, so it works. We have, do we have, can we see here? Yeah, we can see it here. Actually, this is a bit messed up. Why is there no, a bit messed up? Why is there no, oh, I guess the grab, no, 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 that's a bit weird. So this, oh, uh, we, we ran the command before the service 
started. So yes, we need to do this first. And yeah, let's hope that yeah, this should run fairly immediately. Or it might it might even run too early. Let's do we can we can do something else here. We can do services dot my secret generator and actually system D dot services and then a script which does okay, let's do it like this script and in the script we do a uh, this command here all right and then we do this also wanted by multi-user.target uh, but we say before equals my service dot service so this explicitly has to run before our service um, well according to systemd they need to start at the same time they're both wanted by the same uh, target but we're using before and after as well we can declare an order and dependency between these and so once we have this we can delete it down here my secret key we can delete it down here my secret key all right let's try this again uh, but yeah these public keys from here uh, are generated like this again so the the unit of the this succeeded though it oh i built the driver i didn't build the test um, Fair enough. All right, this works very good. It does print it on two lines here, which surprises me a little bit. We do have a an echo dash n here, which is supposed to prevent printing a new line. Uh, in any case, it seems to it seems to work. All right, and but now, next thing, what if we change the service to have a separate user? Uh, one of the most convenient ways to make a service not run zero is to say dynamic user. This makes systemd generate a user as when the when the service starts generates the user and the user gets automatically essentially deleted when the uh, service stops uh, so dynamic user let's try this just using that and this should fail because the secret shouldn't be accessible to that user And it succeeded. Um, that is, oh, well, we have a, <laughs> well, it essentially failed, but we don't detect the failure correctly. Uh, actually, I, I want to try to make this detected correctly. It should fail. Yeah, it should fail here already. Um, and actually, we need a set dash E. Let's also do E U O pipe fail, fairly standard comments. Uh, so it should fail here already and then exit the script. Okay. Let's build the test again. I'm not very happy about all these files living in my next packages. Check out, but we can move them later. All right, actually failed now. Why did it fail? Um, do we have it down here? Yeah, reached set has failed. Okay, now let's try to use load secret from systemd to fix this. Uh, or what is load credentials? And I'm not entirely sure how it works, so let me look that up in another uh, in other modules from next packages. Always a good idea. Note credentials, credential. All right, I see. So it's 
if I remember correctly, it's you assign this variable, and then I believe you can access it in a path based on this variable inside the unit. So credential db password, let's go for this string down here. Okay, so it gets put into a credentials directory, variable directory in here. Okay. There seems to be some weird escaping happening in here, which I don't want to get into. But this seems fairly doable here. Okay, so we will in, well, I guess, I guess we want to switch to script now because we need to do something that's kind of specific to Nexus. So we say password in here, credentials directory, password, and then we do load credentials. We say password is equals, is it an equals? It's a colon, config.password file. All right, uh, load the password. Uh, well, actually, now we have the password in a in a string again. We don't really want to do that. Oh yeah, we can just pass this here. Actually, this is the path to where, where the password is. Uh, we couldn't do this in here, I believe, because this would get propagated as the literal string. I don't think there's any shell variable expansion happening in here. So let's do it here my script and then the credentials directory slash password and we can delete the xx start down here now let's also move this up here all right and let's see if that works vm test oh. i should reuse this yeah And we should also print the, the location just for debugging purposes. This still failed. Uh, let's see why did it fail. Um, can't see anything immediately here. That's not relevant but did we actually did we have a sleep in there at all maybe not i can't see anything immediately let's do let's actually just do my script yeah we don't have a sleep in here let's just sleep otherwise we would run this in a Big loop. And actually, the password we can get it up here. So while well, true, yes. let's also set yeah. Well, you also wanted to output a file. Oh and yeah. It might be better to have sleep two before echo so that we find the logs more easily. Before echo. Yeah. Mm. Just less logs to sift through. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll even do something like this. So it's somewhat obvious where the locks are. And yeah, also I cat the the file. The secret is in file password file. All right, that should work. Um, it's executable and everything else. I'm a bit surprised there's so many logs up here, but we, I guess we should look at this here. That doesn't entirely always work. Uh, all right, still failed. Let's see, log rotate, no, no, oh, nope. Oof, this is this is pretty tricky. Yeah, I can't see I can't see the locks. Uh, let's try the test.nix 
So wait for unit, succeed. Uh, we, oh right, the unit failed. Hmm. So this, we don't need this anymore. Nice service. So we run the script and pass it this one file. Let's do script. I can't really see why this should fail. How can we figure this out? I mean, I guess, let me just try running it locally here. My script and then variable. So let's pass it our password file, which is now going to be uh, just any file really, default.next. Okay, that works. It's a bit messy, but right. Yep. Okay. Hmm. Maybe you can do a system CTL status in the test and that will get you the logs. Hmm. Oh yeah, and actually we, we could try just doing this interactively. Oh, that like that would allow us to do that. Okay, driver interactive and let's uh, show. Then run test driver, we start all. Now we get our VM window. Let me move some windows around. We don't need this right now. Uh, so I'm going to do machine.shell shell interact. All right. So ready. Now we can do system control. Okay. I don't. Oh, yeah. System control status my service dot service failed with the result oh cat slash password yeah that would explain it no such file or directory uh so yeah let's maybe we forgot to enable something for this to actually work at all i'm gonna exit this and let's go back to the module we opened as an example just earlier Load credential. Ah, type one shot. Load credential. I can't immediately see why this would be wrong. Great role. Let's look at the documentation. Systemd.exec load credential. Uh, so we have ID path, load encrypted, we don't need that. Uh, so user dynamic user, credentials directory environment variable. Uh, yep. We're fine. Directory now. Oh, I see. Yeah, I can't see anything immediately wrong. Let's just print the environment variable. Well, it, it seems to have been empty. My service or my, yeah, my service. So this credentials directory, that seems right to me. Echo. The credentials directory is this. I didn't expect this to give trouble.
and this will be annoying to sift through the logs again. So reached state. We haven't seen the logs of this earlier as well. So, hmm. I mean, driver, driver interactive it is, I suppose. What is it? It's just test driver. Start all. And machine dot shell interact. We could also use system D run to debug this. Let's try this if we can figure it out right now. So yeah, that, that variable is just straight empty. So what if we do a system D run? Actually, is this going run? Are we in? No, we are not in the. Echo. Echo hi. No, this is not in the shell anymore. No, and the, I think the VM quit. Yeah, the VM quit. But yeah, there is system D run. We can use this to uh, create very transient units. Uh, let's try to do this here so we can properties. I think it's a simple dash P. Yes. So we should be able to do dash P X X start equals my, um, yeah, my script dot shell. And then we pass, let's pass our echo or PV gen. my secret all right and let's say system d run dash p x x start equals my script dot shell and then my secret command line to execute required um i oh i think it's like this and then authentication all right, you can have my password. Running as unit, uh, by default, the crates went in the background. And now we actually would have to system control stop this. Pseudo. System control stop. All right, so I don't really want to do that. I want to run this in the terminal, terminal itself. I believe there's a wait option in here. Wait, synchronously wait. All right. So let's try this. A run, we specify a wait. And it finished. And we also want to display the logs. So system D run log pipe. Uh, I'm not sure if we want pipe journal. We could also run journal D in a separate directory, but it might, be, it might just be pipe. Nope, it's definitely not pipe. That's okay, so let's try the directory. It is. Oh, oh, it is actually there. Thanks. So it is dash pipe, dash dash pipe. So we don't have bash. So let's do in here actually path so we would have to say oh this is environment actually how does we can we can look at the unit here we can do a next build in test and then we want to build this unit just see what it does to add the path so in here it says environment equals this long thing i 
I guess I'm just going to copy this line here. Just bash. All right. So system D run. I'm going to add a property that is this environment. Okay, we have bash now. And cat not found. Oh, this is going to be annoying. I, I might just propagate my path in here. That will be easier. So I'm just going to do this. All right, now we don't have my secret. This is just a string. We don't have access to that. And uh, well, it might be a thing with the absolute and relative path. And this now works. Yes. Let me also do. Oh, and we can't stop it. <laughs> That's a bit annoying. Let me copy this here into system. System control stop this, or pseudo system control stop this unit. Ooh. Now there should be something in here as well to, to make it stop when you control C, slice scope, nice password property PTY. I mean, it might actually be this bash t. Let's try that. There was also some send sick option. Maybe it's one of those. Yeah. Oh, this seems to work here. But yeah, that also looked related it I said as well. Uh, so yeah, this works. Now let's try to do the load credential thing. Oh, actually, no, let's first try to make it not work by saying uh, start this. Actually, yeah, what is the user this runs as? Uh, let's do who am I in here. And then run this again. Who am I? It runs as root. OK, that kind of makes sense now why it wanted a root access here. So let's change this to use dynamic user. So we're going to do dash p dynamic user equals yes. Uh, I'm not sure if true works in systemd. Uh, internally, the systemd module trans, uh, translates to true and false to yes and no. So let's try this. Uh, exited. That's not great. Let's add the, oh, the set dash x is in here. Dynamic user, yes, the running user. Exit code 203, if we want to find out about that, I believe that's the exec man page. And actually, a very useful tip, uh, systemd.directives uh, gives you a, an index over all the things you might want to look up. Exit code or exit. Exit type, remain after exit. Exit code. Yes, that looks correct. So it's in the systemd.exec man page. Exit code. Um, see exit code below. Exit code. Yes. All right, here I'm looking for the numbers that doesn't seem correct here. It's two or three. Oh, yeah, here. I see. Okay, that helps. So I believe the yeah the script itself wouldn't be accessible by this uh, by this unit because it's in my home directory here. So to fix this, I could do the same thing as Nix does. Let's actually do something interesting here. Let's do Nix store add to or add add. Might just be add my script. Okay, now it's in the next door. We can pass the next door path itself. Let's do this. And now we get to the next problem permission denied. Uh, we don't have access to the secret. And in this case, I, I can replicate this as well here. Let me sudo cp my secret. 
to my slash root. All right, now let's do root my secret. Okay, and now we still have permission denied, and that kind of makes sense. What if we do it without dynamic user? It would run as a root, and that works. So yeah, now we want to have dynamic user and the load credential. So let's do load credential, and then this should be equal to password colon root my secret. All right, and in here, uh, this will actually not work now because we don't have shell interpolation here. It would have to be, yeah. Um, so, hmm. actually, yeah, this will be a bit annoying. So let's let's do this again. Build this unit. Let's cat this because in here we have the script. We already wrote a script which does this. If we cat the script here, it has this, which is pretty much exactly, yeah, this is ex exactly what we want. So instead of running this command line in here, we can just do this long script. And this should fairly closely simulate what happens in the system D unit, and this works. Well, that doesn't really help us that much further. Okay. What was the path? Um, this unit Run my script. Credential. Okay. Load credential. Yeah, and that that works just fine. Oh man. Well, I'm, I'm glad that we were able to figure out the run that can be useful, but I would like it to work in the actual system D, uh, in the actual VM here. Let's just double check all the things. Oh, wait, is this a problem here? Password file? I'm not sure if that was the problem, but it might, oh no, the password file. This is where we specified on the outside. Replics correct the my service. We have the password file which gets passed in here. All right. I guess we can also take a look, and, and we also kind of did that already at the unit again. Cat result service. Uh, look at all of this. Load credential password seek with my key. That looks correct. Did we specify it in the correct section? So it's in systemd.exec, but load credential. This is in credentials. Oh, actually, that might not be correct then. Or mm, service. Well, that. Mm -hmm. Let's just double check. Then okay, here, load credential. Now this is in the service config. That looks correct. The user group type one shot path binds to before after. This all looks correct. DB password load credential seems like this is a common theme where things just don't really work when we try it out ourselves script before my service load oh it's a typo i specified load credentials not load credential oh man oh man okay but it's well, doubly devious because the environment variable is, is credentials. Oh, damn. Yeah, it is. Wow. So hmm, that's, so yeah, that's kind of a, <laughs> a disadvantage when you have an option like this, which just 
passes everything to systemd and systemd doesn't have any check to verify this is actually correct. So yeah, VM test next. I believe it should work now. Okay. Can we maybe have a second part of this next time focusing on stuff like SOAPs and HNICs? Uh, yeah, if, uh, feel free I to jump in. I believe they next. encrypt uh, yeah. uh, stuff with SSH keys of the target machines, so it's not something you can actually test on a test machine. <laughs> yeah, that will be a bit trickier. It still doesn't work. We are, we are already over time, I'm noticing, though. I didn't didn't keep track of the time very well today. Um, so yeah, I well, I'm going to try to figure it, this out myself. Uh, I don't wanna, want for this to take any longer. In theory, it should work, in theory. It does work for all the services. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for joining today anyways. And uh, yeah, see you next time for all the services. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for joining today anyways. And uh, yeah, see you next time. All right, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this a bit longer. You can you can stay if you want. I'm, I'm really annoyed at, at this just failing. Worry not, it was actually Yeah, it's a mystery. I'll definitely stay. <laughs> My yeah, but, um, only complaint would be that we didn't get to the other password management stuff, but we can have a second part in that case. Yeah, yeah. Be I'm, I do intend to continue these as long as people are keep uh, are interested in them, and and I feel like slowly we're figuring out a lot of bugs here and there and problems. So like in this case, I do have some ideas for preventing. Well, ideally, there should be something that. Is there really no check in systemd that makes sure? Actually, let's try the systemd run. What if I misspell it here? Does it complain about this in the logs or anywhere? No. Yes, it does. <laughs> what? Why didn't you tell me this, Eric? <laughs> oh, is this? No, I thought it started right in the test. Well, anyways, so what's the state? What 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 failed again? All oh, right, uh, interactive. Let's do the interactive. Again. Start all. I'm kind of surprised that the GC live stream didn't stop earlier. Usually it stops after an hour, like automatically. Shell interact. Okay. System control status, my service that service failed. Um, I, oh, it's not a shell, so. It's not a TTY, so we can't actually scroll to the right. But you use the show I to show in full. Who am I failed because it's a transient user with no oh. name? Um, okay, that's nice. Yeah, that. Well, did it fail? Yeah, it seems like it failed. Wait. Who am I failed? Because it's a transient user, yeah? Yeah, I'm a bit surprised that we still have logs afterwards. But yeah, that might that seems like it would be it. Let's let's try this. So my script.shell, who am I? Um well I guess I'm just gonna well I think isn't there You can ID? just or it with true or something. Yeah. Yeah, or okay, let's let's do this. Well, actually, yeah, I can I can try this out here. Um, here. 